Look out, everyone. There's some killer titties on the loose. Now that we've got your attention, let's talk about The Last of Us Part 1, Naughty Dog's remaster. Uh, sorry, remake. Because it's time to explore the story behind The Last of Us Part 1. Point 5? Uh, who cares? Roll the credits, editor. In December 2011, an announcement was made for a completely original piece of media that would change how we think about life and the human condition. Adam Sandler's Jack and Jill. <laughs> Sorry. It was a story about an old man escorting a child through a post-apocalyptic world overrun by a virus that turns people into horribly mutated zombie monsters. Along the way, they would meet other humans. Some could be trusted, and some were, of course, Republicans. Through their journey, they would bond to the point that they became family, but without the child maintenance fees. No, it wasn't The Walking Dead or any other post-apocalyptic movie or game. It was a combination of all of these things. Naughty Dog's The Last of Us, the critically acclaimed tale of Joel and not Ellen Page as they make their way across a version of the United States that has been ravaged by your mom's, sorry, cordyceps fungus that has mutated humans and turned them into monsters. It's been released three times at this point because money. The original PS3 launch in June 2013 that ran like shit, the PS4 quote remastered edition that was less shit, and the most recently PS5 quote unquote remake in September 2022. The PS5 remake, which retroactively adopts the Part 1 moniker because reasons, to better fit its sequel fares much better than the PS4 version, which ran less shit as established, with enough work done on the game to justify its. What? The new one costs 70 bucks? for an essentially unchanged 10-year-old game with some new graphics? Oh, the controller rumbles better now? Huh. Well, I guess it's worth it then. Anyways, with Naughty Dog reaching back into their Last of Us cauldron to skate by on the goodwill of a basically geriatric game, let's look at how this version of the game came to be. So join us on a cross-country adventure filled with monsters, mayhem, and what we imagine is very smelly sex between barely washed humans. Obviously, we wouldn't be graced with an overpriced version of a derivative game without that first PS3 release, the development on which began all the way back in 2009, just after Naughty Dog had released their second Indiana Jones, er, I mean, Uncharted game. The success of that game gave the iconic studio enough resources to create two separate teams to work on two games simultaneously, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception, and GTA's Hot Coffee, uh, sorry. The Last of Us, with Uncharted 2 among Thieves game director Bruce Straley assigned to direct the latter. Straley was joined by Neil Druckmann, who is not S35's founder thought for years called Neil Drunkman. With the game being his idea, Druckmann served the project as its creative director. The Last of Us was born out of a college-era concept for a game he had, probably with his clothes on, where the escort and protect gameplay of Ico was set during a zombie outbreak. Rather than having your run-of-the-mill zombie apocalypse, the team was inspired by the BBC Planet Earth series. You remember that? Holy shit, David Attenborough's gonna outlive us all. In that, a fungus called cordyceps infected various insects to help spread itself, and the team had the thought, well, what if cordyceps evolved to infect humans? The notion became the concept for the games infected, and not as S35's founder thought for years, inspired by some chick he met in Amsterdam. In order to convey the emotional story of The Last of Us, the game needed some top-notch voice actors to bring the game to life. So to voice the main protagonist, Joel, Naughty Dog tapped Troy Baker. If you think you don't know who Troy Baker is, you really do. He has almost 400 voice acting credits to his name, and he's been in just about every video game ever, and probably did some Godzilla voiceover you'll see at 2am too. Money's money, right? Not to mention, to voice not Ellen Page, they hired the less known but still incredibly talented Ashley Johnson, who has played some characters you might know, like Tara from Teen Titans, or the waitress from The Avengers that totally grew up to be smoking hot. The original concept for The Last of Us was an old man cop escorting a young girl through cordyceps-infected locations, but due to his heart condition, you would play as the girl. While this would have been interesting, you can't possibly play through an entire game as the young female, so the male character was changed to be less susceptible to keeling over and became the character players would control. And also because patriarchy, although you do play as Ellie for a small portion of the game. 
The team worked hard on the game for almost two years before it was announced at the December 2011 Spike Video Game Awards, where the hype for it was so through the roof, God himself came down and asked what the hell the noise was all about, and being released another two years later to critical and player acclaim, despite the PS3 version feeling slower than a British politician. We're sure Digital Foundry probably covered it, and we love you, John Linneman. Those issues were fixed with the PS4 re-release because money, and this was the definitive version of the game, until the divisive sequel was released in 2020 with that buff chick. But now, Sony has new hardware, taller than some of the guys who manufactured it, and that means that it's time to beat a dead horse. It's more likely that it's being made to coincide with the HBO live-action The Last of Us series, which definitely won't be a complete disaster like a certain recently released Amazon show. And Naughty Dog has already made a live-action movie that was copying other movies. Uncharted. Everyone remembers and loves that one, right? Right? So what's your favorite Last of Us game? Let us know in the comments, and while you're here, why don't you check out our gaming essay on how F122 brings the real Formula One season to you, back when we made serious videos. This is Mike Golchinski, and I'll see you in the next video.